anyone? In the right hands, this small snack can be a very big business, casting the phrase in a pickle in a whole new light. Here's Susan Spencer of 48 Hours. Four years ago, Seamus Jones soured on his boring day job and threw his heart and a lot of cucumbers into Brooklyn brine. It is the hardest job I've ever had. It's also the most rewarding. When I started this company, I negotiated a free commercial kitchen to work out of from 10 p.m. to 8 in the morning. The 32-year-old pickle pioneer pulled all-nighters, curing cucumbers and dabbling in dill. Going into it without a business plan, without operating capital, without a trust fund, just going in and making a product. A product fueled by a vivid imagination. The result? Whiskey sour pickles, spicy maple bourbon pickles, damn spicy pickles. Local orders shot up, and then in 2010 came a call from Williams Sonoma. Uh, their first order was this like 22,000 jars, literally, and you know, you have a month to make it all by hand. Somehow he did. And just three years later, Jones says Brooklyn Brine is topping a million bucks in gross annual sales. Where is this trend going? You can't grow by leaps and bounds like this forever. I would have to disagree with that. One of the great things about pickles is that you can mass produce them. I mean, you don't need a whole lot of equipment. You just need big barrels of vinegar or brine and then food to put in it. Um, if you can market it, you can make a pretty good profit. But if you had a private Adam Steinberg is an historian at the practice, Tenement Museum on Manhattan's like Lower business. East Side. In the 1870s, these foods were considered very exotic. An area known for its colorful pickle past. You just like pickles. I do. <laughs> At the turn of the 20th century, pickle push carts packed the neighborhood. The stench of pickles and garlic in Lower Manhattan stunned people who came down here. The saying was, it would numb your nose, uh, which says just how many pickles there were. Enough to pique the interest of food giant H.J. Hines, who figured if New Yorkers liked pickles, well, so would the rest of America. They were mass producing and mass marketing food. They started selling these pickled cucumbers all across the country. As professional pickle pundit Peter Piper might predict, pickles' popularity promises to persist. Americans today are eating more than one billion pounds of pickles every single year. So grab your gherkins, because that works out to about four pounds of pickles per person. Hmm. Uh, we get roughly about over 2,000 pounds of cucumbers every Tuesday. 2,000 pounds? Every Tuesday. And they sell? Yeah! <laughs> In fact, Alan Kaufman, AKA's New York's pickle guy, says sales are rising steadily. He prides himself on pickles right out of the barrel. But even this traditionalist is branching out. That is pickled pineapple. We got mangoes, okra going on. Mushrooms. Mushrooms, uh, pearl onions. Okay, it's gonna be 275. Both Kaufman and Jones are convinced that from kosher to carrot, mango to mushroom, there is still a big untapped market out there, at least as big as their passion for pickles. We want somebody to come here, bite the pickle, say, wow, this is the best pickle I ever had, and that happens every day. I love the pickle. Yeah.